right. It is six o'clock um, on March 22nd, 2021. We're gonna call it to order the Village of Lake Bluffs Finance Committee virtual meeting. Um, before we begin, I just wanna state that this meeting will be held primarily virtually. And as required by law, at least one representative from the village will be present at Village Hall and the virtual meeting will be simulcast for members of the public who do not wish to view the virtual meeting from another location. The boardroom can accommodate 13 people, including members of the public body and the village staff while maintaining the six feet of social distance between individuals required by Executive Order 2020-43. Accordingly, the opportunity to view the virtual meeting at Village Hall is available on a first come first served basis. Uh, members of the public may view and participate in the meeting via online at lakebluff.org slash virtual meeting or dial in at 312-626-6799. Enter meeting ID 880-3237-9888. Press pound when prompted for a participant ID. Additional instructions are available in the agenda packet immediately following the agenda. Also, the meeting will be live streamed at lakebluff.org slash channel 19 broadcast live on Comcast channel 19. And once available, a recording of the meeting will be posted on the village website and periodically rebroadcast on channel 19. Okay, may we have a uh, roll call, please? Certainly, Member Meyer? Here. Member Toll? Here. And Chair Inkman? Here. Okay, the first order of business is approval of the minutes from our last meeting on March 8th. 2021. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, in reviewing the minutes, do we have any corrections or updates to make? Comments? No, ma'am. Okay. Hearing none, may we have a roll call, please? Member Meyer? Aye. Member Toll? Aye. And Chair Ankerman? Aye. Next is any non-agenda items from visitors. So the Finance Committee has now allocated 15 minutes at this time for individuals who would like the opportunity to address the committee on a matter that is not listed on tonight's agenda. Glenn or Drew, do we have anyone waiting to um, address the committee? Madam President, is there anyone in the boardroom with you? Not that I can see. There are no other attendees uh, on the virtual meeting, Chair Ankeman. Thank you. Okay, so on to our business items. The first being um, a draft of the operating budget and capital. Um, Drew or Bettina, would you like to start by kind of reviewing what we've been presented with? I'll, I'll start, Bettina. Um, the, the goal of tonight, at least from staff's perspective, is the hope that we can get to the point where you all, the Finance Committee, recommend to the Village Board the budget that we've been talking about over the last few months, um, both operating and capital. Um, included in the um, this document is really uh, everything that's been discussed before. We, we added in the equipment replacement fund purchases, which include two uh, squad cars and two multi-purpose tractors. These are John Deere tractors that we purpose, purchased historically, which in the summertime, in the spring, in the fall, or mowing, and in the uh, winter months, are scraping and brushing off uh, sidewalks. So we put a lot of work into those um, items and expect a lot of them, but it's time to replace two of them. Um, we were going to replace one last year and do a, a one-two punch in the fiscal year plan, one in the first year, two in the second, but, uh, sorry, one in the second, but we hit the pause button on that, and so now we're looking for two. Um, so really no net change in the um, fiscal plan. And same with the um, police squad cars. We actually we stayed on pace with those last year, but this is for the other two for this year. So both those would put us back on pace with where we were originally planning. And this, this plan also includes um, the capital items that have been previously discussed from the projects, and there's more detail sheets in there. And um, I had a couple of questions from, from folks um, um, today and uh, actually a little bit last week too, but um, happy to answer any questions. Uh, Jeff Hansen's on the call as well if there's questions about some of the other uh, major public improvements. Um, and there's another piece to the budget that includes, uh, I think uh, Trustee Dewar had asked for this and we gave this at the last meeting, but it was how and where did the deferred
deferred items from last year's bumpy budget season, where did those end up? And that there's a, um, a table that's included in the packet that summarizes where those have been placed in the fiscal plan. And um, there wasn't a slight uh, a typo in there for one of the projects, the handrail projects for the viaduct, and that got cleaned up and sent out earlier um, today. So hopefully I've had a chance to change that, uh, see that change in number. And then if there's um, any time left over in tonight's meeting, um, Bettina and I wanted to briefly talk about with everyone the idea of changing the frequency of reporting of um, finance um, revenues and expenses to you all. We've been doing it for a long time on an annual basis and talk about maybe moving to a quarterly reporting, but that doesn't have to get accomplished tonight. It's really just introducing the topic and see if there's any heartburn, but that's the, the gist of things tonight, uh, Madam Chair. You mean moving from a monthly basis to a quarterly? Is, Correct. Is it annual instead, annual to quarterly, and you mean? No. I do. I mean monthly. If I said annual, yes. Yeah. It's the heat, so. Rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to, to touch base on that schedule that you had referenced, um, which was uh, Mark Dewar had asked about these deferred items. Yep. And um, just to kind of summarize it briefly, um, it looks as though all of those items that are on the list that we had deferred are now included in the FY22 budget, except two items, right? Yes. So we have the bike path lighting, um, and that's scheduled for 25 uh, at 250K. And then the uh, the Boardman Court is also being put off until FY26 coordinate with some other work that's going right. to be it's projected to be done at that time. But everything else that had been deferred is now in this current FY22. Correct. Um, all right. So um, going through the list of capital projects put together a really nice summary with little pictures to kind of walk us through what the different line items are. Uh, do we have any uh, questions from any of the finance committee members on any of those items? No, Madam Chair, I do not. No surprises on that end. Um, well, looking at um, one question that Drew and I had talked about earlier was the walkway project, um, because this is the first year that we've had something that's quite this significant. And um, Drew, do you want to elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. Um, so the project we're talking about is in the in the fiscal plan for next year is resurfacing of the village maintained pathways within Tangley Oaks, and then that section of path um, by the uh, elementary school along uh, Green Bay. Um, and then um, there's a little more to it, but um, that's really the, the main areas of the project. This is something that um, I, I won't say snuck up on us, but it was one of those where I think um, we were looking, trying to find ways to maybe extend this and do this more, but we had conversations with the Tangley Oaks Homeowners Association who really felt like this needed to be done last year and um, it was put off and, and, and here it is in this year's budget. But um, there's more pathway work. If you look at the multi-year plan on page 17 of the uh, document 17 of the PDF for the packet, uh, 17 of 42. But um, we have some regular reoccurring investments in the past. And, and like a lot of projects um, that we've talked about recently, even at the last meeting, village engineer Jeff Hansen has commented that we may show 50,000, you know, every other year, every three years for or 100,000 for reoccurring um, reinvestment in infrastructure. It may make sense when we get closer to those years to do the work and, and, and lump sum it and try to make, you know, take advantage of economies of scale. This is one of those where um, Jeff is hoping to uh, gather uh, data to help us better plan some of these other projects to include the McCory Trail. There's some areas that we know we need to do some resurfacing there, but this Tangley project was one that um, bubbled to the top um, that it's, um, it's never been resurfaced before. 
and it, it has lots of areas where root penetration and there's cracks and everything that it's, um, it's time. And while it's not 100% in bad shape, there's, there's other areas that could um, maybe wait a little bit of time. It's just the economies of scale and the efficiencies of doing it all at once and, and, and doing it in one fell swoop is, is, is much more beneficial to do that. Uh, Jeff, did I miss anything on that? Uh, I would just add that uh, part, a lot of that cost is there aren't proper crosswalks uh, as that interior path crosses all of the uh, interior courts and the circles in Tangley Oaks. I think with the uh, pandemic, there was a lot more walking going on and people, especially uh, who aren't as steady on their feet, there's a lot of bumps as they're trying to cross the street. So that's one thing specifically the HOA had had commented quite heavily on was how there was a little bit dangerous at certain spots. So once we start doing all of the uh, crosswalks, then I think it makes more sense just to do the whole path at once, too. Yeah, Jeff, I just wondered about some of the the issues with roots and some of the issues with the water that's kind of, you know, washing the dirt away around the path, and then the path kind of, you know, responds in, in ripples. Um, how much work is going to be done kind of structurally before the, the path gets just relayed? Uh, not a whole lot. You know, our, our goal is not to take out a lot of those trees, even if it may bubble back through in, in eight years or, or five years, we might be back doing some patching. But uh, the drainage work, you know, a lot of the, a lot of that area doesn't drain very well. Some of it drains to the interior of Armour. Some water goes over the path to the street. Uh, you know, we'd have to get uh, a survey done here you know first part of the project is to go do the engineering mm -hmm. and there might be a couple areas identified for extra attention but usually it, it's a matter of taking the top layer off the path kind of seeing if it's if it's uh sinking when you drive on it then adding a little more gravel base and, and trying to address it that way mm -hmm. as i noticed there was one part where a section had been cut out and there were some pipes that had been laid underneath the, the, the path and you can actually see the pipes sitting out you know they're not very big they're you know just several inches in diameter but yeah the HOA did that got it okay. does the, uh, can I just ask a quick question does, yes does the thank you does the HOA share in any of the costs of the um, when we're resurfacing that path or is that something that the village um, pays for yeah, when the when the HOA brought this up and, and started asking us to fix it, we went through all the original documents of Tangley, and I think we found it's pretty clear that's the village's responsibility. Okay. And the easiest rule of thumb is think of where the roadways are and the right of way. That's the, where the where it's right away where there would normally be like sidewalk. Then that's the village's responsibility. Okay. Thank you. The interior the paths interior. follow the HOA. Okay. So the interior paths uh, through the woods are not included in this. Correct. I have a question. So I've read the document today and I've spent actually some significant time reading the document and some entries are actually not cryptic, but you wonder what is the, the content of that project line item. One thing that would be really useful, I mean, I know the, the, the area, but I don't know all the projects, is to have uh, a, a session open to all where Jeff or uh, Drew would actually go through the list and describe what is what list item by item. What do you think about that? And that might not be in this setting, but it might be an open open session somewhere else during the week. That would be very useful. Well, I, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I, I know that there are times that, that we do kind of go through all of those items. Um, having been through this a number of years, I'm, I'm trying to remember the last time that we actually did, you know, sequentially make sure that we go through each and every one. But it does seem like we've kind of touched on each of these because every year we do that that 10-year projection and um, that 10-year projection in theory flows through to the next year for everything that didn't get completed um, and then sometimes there are emergencies and those unforeseen situations get added to what actually gets accomplished but um drew do you have anything to add to that no, I mean, we can certainly do it and, and I mean, if moving forward that we can spend um, one entire meeting devoted to capital. I mean, we've tried mm -hmm. to be, you know, efficient and make use of time and it's been, and uh, I don't know, maybe optimistic where we put more things on the agenda. Than yeah. <laughs> um, last, you know, last meeting was, was more than optimistic. Yeah. You know, uh, I would say 
as as a departing uh, trustee uh, and the likelihood of having um, a number of new uh, faces on the board here in the next couple of months. Uh, we've had a couple of off kind of off campus uh, sessions mm -hmm. that have been very, very profitable and, and, and productive for board members where we've spent on a Saturday, we've spent four or five hours and gone through some of these meteor, i.e. Uh, longer items uh, and, and had a chance to, to really kind of dig in and become educated. Um, I, for one, appreciated uh, my initiation to uh, 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 sewers, sanitary and storm sewers, and, and, and the water piping uh, issues as well. These are the um, not so exciting but fundamental issues that tend to take a long time to explain. And uh, I do recall that way back, you know, George Russell was very, very patient in explaining to us and graphically showing us this is this this set of sewers is, you know, a hundred years old. This set of sewers is 75 years old, and so forth and so forth. And it, I really gained a, a, a significant appreciation for the overall context of a lot of the uh, capital uh, uh, programs and projects that we have to go through. Um, I, I would I would certainly encourage uh, you all to do that again uh, sometime perhaps in the next uh, six months. Totally can do that. Good good idea. Yeah. Mark, this is awesome. Thank you. That probably is part of what I'm asking for. That is, even though we know what is on the list, having a good understanding of what is coming to us, things I'm, I've missed stuff on that list, and so having that grounding yeah. would be very useful. Thank yeah. you. I I think so. It was. It was very productive. We did that uh, uh, twice for sure, and it's we'll probably do again. Yeah, I, I agree, and I, I appreciate um, I appreciate that input. And uh, Drew, we can kind of uh, touch base on a time that we can schedule something like that. For sure, no, great. Yep. A, and and you could idea. you could throw in the 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 strategic plan and and kind of. Uh, of an update and, and educational process on that too. I mean, there are a lot of things you could do. Yeah, uh, there's a board, there's, yeah, there's certainly a board retreat plan, you know, once we get, you know, whomever and everyone together. Um, yeah. But that's certainly something we can do. I mean, we could do that all day. Yeah. <laughs> so at the same time, you know, trying to, oh, no. right, trying to keep a rhythm Bring and coffee. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So. Um, so, so just touching on some of the bigger items in the Capitol, I mean, some of them are, are just what you would normally expect, the street resurfacing and patching, um, that number is, is a big one, you know, five or 600,000 a year. And, um, you know, obviously the streets change each year. And so that, that list to be repaved, um, has been, uh, updated, um, the, uh, the underpass pedestrian bridge improvements. That's another big item of 370. Contribute to just in just giving the, the finance committee and other board members a level of understanding of what needs to be done. Can you hear me? You're freezing up. What? I had asked if. Um, Jeff would be able to give us a quick update on the underpass pedestrian bridge improvements because that's another one of the bigger items. Oh yeah, yeah, great. Is he, is he connected? Thank yeah, you. We have a, you approved a contract with Copenhaver Construction uh, I think early this year or very late last year and we are uh, in the middle of shop drawing exchange so they have uh, have their suppliers making drawings. They send them to us. Uh, myself and our consultant, T.Y. Lynn, reviews those for compliance with our specifications. Uh, they are talking about starting sometime in April. The, it's the, the new bridge is precast concrete planks, and they have their precast order in, I believe, and they're supposed to get that sometime in April. 
and they will want to start shortly after they have them, but uh, we'll see if they actually come on time. There's, there's been some supply chain issues with everything. Yeah. Thank you for that. And um, just to touch on, um, you know, another another couple of big line items. There's, you know, Forest Cove lift station, 240K, and the water main improvements of 470, um, and some water main relocation. These are, you know, just some of the bigger items. Um, I, I don't know that you need to specifically say anything about them because they're they're specific in nature what we're doing this year, but they're also just kind of standard things that need to be um, work that needs to be done to keep our infrastructure uh, working. Um, I'm not hearing any other uh, questions or concerns regarding um, the capital plan. I, I have an indirect question as long as you open that up to Jeff. Jeff, what can you give us a quick update on the level of disruption when the uh, when the uh, beams are set and 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 any other work to uh, to to set the uh, uh, the the foundation on either side of of the beams property you're talking about? No, no, I'm sorry, beam B E A M oh. M is and Mike yeah for so, the for the over, for the uh, uh, overpass. Yes, yeah, so the. Uh, we, we don't have their, their full schedule yet, but they're going to have to take the old one out. We've allowed them in the contract to close the trail for up to 60 days and reroute people. So they have to take the existing bridge down, which I believe will happen overnight. We've uh -huh. given them that option because the roadway will be closed for uh -huh. several hours as they do that. Yeah. Then they have to pour concrete to widen the footings. Right. Uh, the abutments. And then they bring in the new, you know, putting the precast beams on is probably the quickest uh -huh. part of the process. But then there is the asphalt and concrete work on each side. The railing work will take some time. There's quite a bit of uh, different unique items to getting that open again. And yeah, more, more specifically, again. I was looking for the impact on 176. Uh, it was that it'll be closed uh, in, at least one overnight. Uh, and then they should be able to do the work with flaggers in one lane open. Oh. Uh, we've restricted them from peak hours as far as closing the lane. But uh, much of those days, yeah, they'll have people on each end flagging traffic and, and one lane shut, one lane open, okay. so they can put their equipment under there and, and work. Yeah. So the public safety impact shouldn't be overwhelming. Uh, it shouldn't be. Their traffic control has all been approved by IDOT. That is IDOT's road. So that uh, that all has gone through them, and they will have to adhere to it. But uh, it will be disruptive uh, to traffic. I guess we try uh -huh. to avoid the peak hours of the morning and the afternoon. Uh huh. Thank you. Um, I just had a question about the um, the lift stations. Those are always um, pricier items that that need to be worked on from time to time. And um, <clears throat> I think that's probably one that I know that I don't have a good big picture of, you know, like here are the X number of lift stations and this is the age of them and this is the useful life. And, and that might be something that would be helpful um, when we do our, our retreat to kind of just get a big idea, a big picture of, well, how many of these are there? I haven't seen, I mean, I don't know that we've, um, I don't know that we've gone into that depth, and I think that that might be really helpful as well, just some of those um, specific categories of capital, if we could kind of just get a bigger picture of that when we do have our retreat. I think that would be really helpful. Maybe Jeff could give you a tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of them are in the ground. Yeah. Outside. That's Outside. my point. <laughs> there, yeah. there, is, there is one that has a roof on it, and we can go to Tangley Oaks. Um, but yeah, if you, if you got an hour, we can talk an hour about lift stations. <laughs> okay. All right. It's on the list. It's on the list. Got it. All right. Um, if there's no other uh, questions or comments regarding uh, the capital plan, um, we did skip over um, the vehicle replacement fund, but I don't think that there was um, anything um, significant or controversial in that and we also just kind of jumped over the additional items that we're finalizing that are part of um, 
this year's fiscal plan, just some new items uh, that, that weren't um, in the original budget. Drew, did you want to mention uh, what those items were? Sure, um, and that was just accounting for uh, an increase in public works health insurance. You know, they're one of the uh, group of employees that are not part of our consortium. They are funded through the local 150 and um, we have different relationship with them through our collective bargaining agreement and who pays for what, but we wanna make sure we accounted for that net insurance uh, increase. Mm -hmm. um, also um, dealing with the ever changing uh, IT security environment um, our current provider is suggesting, um, and, and most of the people, and most of the people, most of the municipalities and our um, consortium is going this route to have dual, uh, dual authentication um, for, um, for it's a level of a, another layer of security to help protect our um, network uh, from unauthorized access. Um, and um, that's um, been included um, and recommended um, there's also a, a learning module, if you will, through the village's um, payroll software, Paylocity. Um, when we acquired that not too long ago, there was a freebie period of time where we were able to take advantage of some automated, uh, automated administrative task functions, training, and so forth, and uh, other personnel, um, uh, I guess, task, if you will. And um, that's been very helpful. We, you know, have a very lean organization and I would call it a decentralized HR function. So this helps keep things moving and keeps it uh, totally um, and completely attached to our payroll system. Um, and so that's very helpful. And then the final one, it's um, Lake County Major Crimes Task Force. That's another um, mutual aid in the public safety side of things for the village that we take advantage of. Obviously, you know, thank goodness, knock on wood, don't have a lot of uh, major crimes to deal with, but when we do, um, we need this uh, agency uh, and the resources that they can bring and help us investigate. And um, over the years, this group has had uh, discovered that it needs um, insurance, um, a standalone agency, and so now they're making tracks to do that, and now we'll, as a member agency, we'll pay our fair share of those dues and accounting for that as well. So um, there's a question that was asked um, I think Trustee Dewar had asked it about the idea that these costs, you know, that we're adding into the budget really don't change the projected, um, how the village's plans um, for spending um, impact the goal to maintain, you know, 50% of a year's worth of the operating expenditures, keeping that available. Um, this is a, a net of a little over you know, $10,000, so it's not a big, dent in that at all. So the numbers that we've shared with you previously, I would affirm that the, the village's uh, reserves will stay at the point that we shared with you previously. So um, Bettina, I don't know if you have a, a chart handy to remind folks of what that looks like. Jimmy, you can share your screen. that was previously shared um, in a packet. And, you know, if I add the $14,000 to, to this number, it really doesn't shift this percentage at all when we're dealing with, you know, these kinds of totals. Thank you, Bettina. Sure, you're welcome. I have a question, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, Barbara, this is back to Barbara. I'm looking at page 17 of the document that was provided to us. And about two weeks ago, we looked at... Um, mains water mains replacement and i remember i, I don't i didn't look at the document again but i remember that we budgeted eight hundred thousand dollars this year and then 46625 and when i look at line uh 27 of page 17 there's only 470 but nothing in the next 10 years and i really i believe that we had talked about an ongoing expense or capital expense or that kind of work uh, from jeff 
I'm just getting there on my schedule. So you're referring to the project list, the 10-year summary? Yes, page okay. 17 is the PDF, yep. Right, so I'm looking under um, the section like 17, 18, 19, where all the list station and sanitary sewers. So that was line 20, uh, 27, water okay. main replacement. I've got it. And we had a conversation two weeks ago, uh, I think, where uh, uh, Jeff was talking about the, the needed ongoing cost for replacement of our water sewers. And I think the numbers were between 400 and, six and 800. Uh, being this year, I think, eight, raised to 800, and the year after that, 625, and after that, $400,000 ongoing for the next 10 years. And it's and not I on can, that uh, spreadsheet. I can speak to that question, if that's okay, Barbara. Thank you, Bettina. Sir. So the items number 25 through 29 have kind of broken out um, the expenses that summarize line 30. So if you if you look further out into the chart on line 30 with projections uh, 23 and on, show a $400,000 commitment uh, annually with a $650,000 increase in FY26. That's related to the $250,000 water tower um, painting. So it's just that in the out years, we haven't broken out itemization for exactly which type of project would make up that 400000 but it's still sitting there as a projected annual contribution to infrastructure. Didn't you have, thank you, Bettina, didn't mm -hmm. you have next year at 625? And then in the conversation, this is my confusion, in the next, I thought that was only related to a water mains a management. I thought that. Uh, valves and the water tower were actually different line items in your 400, 600, 800 thousand uh, dollars. The the reason why I'm I'm saying that is because it was it was an emer it was an urgency to work on our water mains. That is why. And also, I'll add to that. That's also what we based our recommendation for an increase in the water rate on is to continue those improvements. Yeah, and I can answer that a little bit. You know, the work specifically to the tower, I think, is called out separately. You know, we have the 10,000 this coming year to wash it and the 250 to paint it. Uh, it's one, two, three, four years later. Uh, the valves and the hydrants, I guess I kind of see those as, you know, the valves are on the mains, the hydrants are just off. Uh, the, ideally, we wouldn't be spending a lot in the future on those uh, appurtenances to the mains, but uh, that kind of is in my mind that 400,000 on mains when we end up doing valves that is somewhat to, to help the mains so I, I kind of saw those as together but uh, the plan would be going forward to put as much money to mains as we can but when we have problems with valves and hydrants we have to fund that probably out of that 400 and divert a little bit away from it to, to replace things that are broken or, or in need of a repair. My intent is to support you, Jeff, when you said that we had infrastructure in the ground that needs repairs and we might want to raise our capital expenditures to support your needs. Are you still, um, I wish I could find those numbers uh, that we talked about easily uh, when we were talking about the water rates, but um, you know, we did certainly see the $400,000 a year uh, in the out years with the 250000 added in FY26. Um, Aaron, did you have a comfort level given that conversation uh, for where we ended up on the water rates? Or do yeah, you I feel like when you... Yeah, I think Jeff's explanation of the, the 400000 included the valves and the hydrants. I mean, there's, on, that, on that breakdown, there's really not that much more uh, as far as line items go. So if, if that 400,000 included whatever replacements or maintenance on hydrants and valves, then I'm, I'm totally comfortable with that. And I'll add, a, I'll add a question here to kind of reinforce this point. And this question is directed to either Drew or Jeff. Uh, in your opinion, based on all of your experience in uh, Lake Bluff for the years you've been here, have we allocated sufficient monies uh, to the water infrastructure? I, I, let me just state, generally speaking, all uh, almost without exception, the needs for capital exceed our f available funding. That's always the case. Okay. So that in mind, I think what, what shows, you know, I'm, and I'm bringing up, can everybody see my screen? Yeah. So I wanted to highlight, so this is the numbers we were talking about 
and here's that, just say it ties out with what we talked about at the last meeting with the recurring reinvestment in the water system, but that was the capital improvements list dollars. Yes. So that, that jives there, but, um, but yeah, uh, Bill, the, the, um, this is what we're, we're trying to do is have a, in, in every regard, and, and this came up when, when Barbara and I were talking earlier about the um, village's revolving investment or reinvestment in its pathway programs. Our goal is to have this reoccurring program. We're always putting away money, and chances are, like Jeff said at the last meeting, um, where, yes, the last finance committee meeting, where these $400,000 increments, those, there may be years where we say, you know what, it's better we're going to bundle that up. We're going to save for a year and go do a bigger splash at 800 or 850 or something like that and, and, and try to do it in that manner. But generally, we wanted to show and express the need uh, to keep reinvesting in the system. Um, so um, this is, Jeff, would you say this is the magic number that re most accurately reflects what do we say? I think this is an important question. The half mile of water <laughs> infrastructure we have. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think yeah, that was uh, approximately the 75-year replacement. Right. Um, you know, right. Uh, right now, our the age of our existing infrastructure is older than if we had been doing this, you know, for the past 75 years. You know, the average age of our pipes is not half of 75 years. It, it's much older than that. Uh, I've gone back and forth a little bit on on this whole thing because we've looked at, uh, you know, it's going to be 20 to 30 more years before we replace all of our cast iron mains, which is where the majority of our brakes are. And that's why we started just putting in valves uh, and replacing valves rather than waiting for the, all that water main to be replaced where you replace the valve anyway, because we had neighborhoods where if there's a break, we have to shut down 50, 60 homes. So knowing that we're not going to get to some of these mains for a couple of decades, we want to be able to have the service be better when we do have breaks. You know, the cost of fixing a break, it's not nothing. It's, it's five, $7,000, but um, it, it's manageable, you know, as most communities have a similar number of breaks as we have, as long as we can control how many people we have to shut off. So ideally moving forward, most of that 400,000, if not all, will just go to replacing mains. But we wanted to have at least, you know, we have neighborhoods that have, uh, the whole street has nothing but 80, 100 year old fire hydrants. So that's why we decided to go in, like, in the West Terrace. We replaced one fire hydrant on most of the streets last year just in case something were to happen. We have one we know should work every time if, if you know, if the next one down breaks or something when it's needed. So trying to shore up the public safety end of that a little bit and increase our level of service by not having to shut whole neighborhoods down is why we've taken some money to go to valves and hydrants right now. Um, hopefully we can get past where we have a newer hydrant on every street and we have valves that work a little better and then we can just put all the money into main replacement moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Sounds reasonable to me. Um, and, and touching on uh, lift station repairs once again, um, I brought that up because looking at the volume of, of what our costs end up being, you know, year to year um, and comparing that to the sewer charges that we um, get in terms of money coming in, it might be time to look at our sewer charges because uh, the funding level isn't really matching our needs. So um, that's not something to, you know, resolve today, but it's just something that, you know, given the level of work that needs to be done, um, we're not we're not collecting enough to, to fund that on an ongoing basis forever. The, uh, the Forest Cove project should be the last six-figure lift station project for quite some time. We, we've <laughs> touched many of our lift stations in the past five years. Uh, yeah. It should be more of just ongoing maintenance moving forward for probably t 20 years. I think yeah. the next lift station to be replaced is Lansdowne, which is not that old. Okay. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, is it, yeah. yeah. I have, there's another line. I talked to Drew about that today. That is line 39, the storm sewer trunk that should be on our radar as a, as a, as a group of people. The, um, the, the, I mean, my concern as a talking to, um, our, our talking the village is a great portion of the village is affected by uh, flooding and so on. And so line 39 storm sewer trunk is, uh, should be our concern. 
you're saying the timing of it is too far out? Is that what you're getting at? Or, I mean, it sounds like we've, you know, we've got some plans to do some significant work. It is, but this is finding the, fi the financing that is most important. Yeah. Uh, because that would be extremely, uh, that is costly and that is above and beyond what we can afford on a regular basis from capital improvement. Right. And that's, that's the idea of the, yeah. the stormwater utility, right? Right. right. So what, do, should, what should we uh, plan forward in our, cap I mean, just to do the utility itself and to study the utility and how we can raise money by div uh, other means? Should we invest something up front? Should there, be a li should there be a line item to see how we can actually inquire about the utility? Uh, well, that's what we're presently doing, right, Drew? Yes, and there's some money in there for next year to do that. And there's there's um, there's a couple different sources. There's um, well, I, there's two things. One is there is money in next year's budget to continue um, protecting our storm sewer modeling project and working with um, Christopher Burke, our stormwater consulting engineers, and to you all uh, in the near future um, some more. Uh, detailed information about a stormwater utility. Jeff and um, Christopher Burke have continued having conversations. We've had the finance, uh, financial advisors of the village involved, you know, scaling bonds. What could that look like over 30 years? And so that's, that's been underway, but uh, in, in the laboratory, so to speak, and, and not ready for prime time, but we'll be bringing it to you soon. Um, but uh, Trustee Charlo, um, he and I had that conversation and talked about that, that there is a uh, significant need financially to, to support uh, stormwater infrastructure. And um, I explained that village engineer Hanson and I have been talking with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, they've had um, some programs, uh, unfortunately, some of them are specifically dedicated to Cook County and only Cook County. So that's going to take a, a lobbying effort for us to change um, um, that pot of money, who can have access to it. Um, I'm not too optimistic that that's going to change in the near future. Um, those people in Cook County are not going to, you know, they're going to keep, they're going to close that purse as tight as they can. <laughs> and, um, but uh, also we've submitted um, this trunk system project to the Stormwater Management Commission of Lake County. Uh, knowing that they had limits um, with respect to their grant program of $2 million. And we asked, Jeff, I'm trying to recall what was the total amount we asked for? Uh, $14 million or 14 and a half, I believe. So we don't read so well, clearly, but um, we wanted to make a point <laughs> that, that their program, the way that, and this, actually, they, they encouraged us to do this, is to, the way they had set up the, this grant program was really, difficult for them to award good projects that you know really served a, a lot of folks and so we submitted this knowing that it was going to be out of bounds at the same time we wanted to help them to understand that they should probably change their program um and and maybe open the door to projects like ours in, in the next round of funding so um but but i think the way i described this to trustee charlot was that the village was going to be uh, opportunistic and the, the idea of seek out grant funding and alternative funding whenever and wherever we can and be very excited about that. We have, um, we certainly have a good set of consultants that are meeting with us um, and they have their ear to the ground and, um, and, and, and know that this is an important um, system to the village that we're trying to make um, headway with. And so um, I think our full attention is on it. So would Lake County not want to partially assist? Uh, is, is the goal of their, you know, $2 million limit or whatever the limit to only 100% fund whatever was being applied for? And so then we would be automatically disqualified? Now, the, the issue with the Lake County funding is they don't want to help us build the first leg, <clears throat> excuse me, down by the lake and and not get it all the way to the underpass they want to see the underpass problem fixed but we'd have to uh, come the other 12 million dollars so we're trying to influence their process a little bit where maybe they're more open to yeah. helping us get the first thing in the ground so that yeah. it gets momentum and we can yeah. keep finding other sources to push west again they don't want a bridge to nowhere kind of situation yes yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, a question for you drew i'm sorry Barbara. No, go ahead, Bill. It's fine. oh i'm sorry joy who was talking. Uh, question for you, Drew. 
this Army Corps of Engineer money earmarked for Cook County, was any Army Corps of Engineer money earmarked for Lake County? Not through this particular program. Okay. What's the name of the program? Just curious. 219. Is there any more? Is there a different number? Is there anything other than the numbers, Jeff? It is Section 219. Uh, Highland oh, Park okay. has been trying to yeah. get Army Corps money for their problems as well, and the program mm -hmm. available to Lake County, I believe, is Section 204. But you have to pay the Corps to do a study to show a appreciable level of damage, and Highland Park failed that test, yeah. uh, and they didn't qualify, and it's not a giant pot of money either so uh, this 219 funding is basically available to any community if your representative requests it you get on the list and it will come through with about a million to a million and a half dollars to help you do your project yeah section 204 is a much higher bar and you say when your representative requests it what's what representative is that uh, your congressional representative oh so in this instance we'd be going to Brad Schneider to ask him for help with this yes Yes. Okay. Thank you. Joy, did you have a question? Uh, I, well, I just wanted to say, like, I really appreciate that we're looking at all different um, sources of funding for this because uh, if ultimately we have to go forward and do the stormwater utility um, fee, I think it's really good for us to be able to show that we've got a bundle of different funding sources for residents so that they understand uh, just the, the cost that we're dealing with and, and the fact that uh, we need to enact some kind of a utility fee. And I, um, just in general, I, I kind of know when Regis is trying to, um, when, when there's an urgency to it, I understand that urgency. And um, I also understand that when you come from a business background, I'm from a business background too, Regis, sometimes you want things to move a little faster and there's so many different aspects to look at in the stormwater issue and the trunk issue and I think that's why it feels like it's moving slowly but it's not lots of things are happening and and at some point all those sources will come together um, so I anyway appreciate what the village has been doing what the administration's been doing but they, and I, here's the, part of the rub is you know the way this has to flow you have to work really east to west and that's the most expensive way to do it, right? We could do some stuff in the terraces, but it's gonna further amplify the issues we're dealing with with the viaduct and other places. So it's the sequence of things doesn't help us either. Right, right. Well, at this point in time, um, for members of the finance committee, we've you know discussed uh, a lot of these items. Um, and I'd like to know if we have uh, a motion to recommend uh, to staff uh, to accept um, the draft of the FY22 budget. So moved. Do we have a second? And second. All right, roll call. Or we probably don't even need a roll call to recommend. Is that right? You do. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> okay, uh, Trustee Toll. Aye. Uh, Trustee Meyer. Aye. And Chair Ankeny. Aye. Um, in this very brief amount of time that's left, um, there were some informational items um, that you were wanting to bring up, Drew? Do we have an opportunity? So, um, let's get back to that. So, um, we've already talked about the deferred budget items. So, the informational item that we, but um, Bettina and we had a, a, one conversation with Chair Inkman about this, but the idea is, um, in, a, in Tina's previous life in a different uh, community, they were reporting quarterly to the board uh, for a number of reasons, and I'm probably not even as thoroughly as we do monthly, from what I understand. Um, but the idea is, um, you know, when you get the monthly reports, there is a, not a lot of great movement. You know, a couple of the problems is, you know, we're always like our sales tax dollars are in the rears, you know, we don't have the most up-to-date, you know, property tax comes in in, in really two chunks. And so it's, it's the information you get, if you're, if you're looking at it as a dashboard, um, I guess you would say your instrument panel is very small. <laughs> so yeah. it's, right, it, it, the, you don't really appreciate any of the movement. And so we were talking about um, two things. One is we could certainly go to a quarterly port and provide other information if you wanted to, like a hybrid, if there are certain things we can get on a regular basis, but really kind of a, a meteor quarterly report, we could do that and that would achieve a couple things. One is Bettina, it would free up Bettina to work on other more projects and activities. 
um, because it is, I mean, you look at those reports and they're, I mean, it is, it is, it's a lot of work and, um, and she makes it look easy, which is good and, and a compliment to her, but it, it is a lot of work. Uh, and the, the second is, it, like I was describing, it, you could see the, you know, the, the movement probably more discernibly and, and it would make sense, okay, there's more, uh, there is more movement. And, and there's so, more stuff to trend. <laughs> yeah, right. You can see it move, the dial move. So that, that's the idea, we wanted to introduce that. Add and, and talk about it and see if there's any you know knee jerk or heartache about it and we can talk through that and maybe if there's like I said a hybrid version where you can get information that maybe more you know new I guess you, you may want to see more frequently then we can look at that so I just want mm -hmm. to put that out there. I'll make a comment and I, I think quarterly reporting is, is totally appropriate um, and my my only concern and I have no reason to be concerned because I'm, I'm sure it would happen anyway but if, if there was some sort of you know, surprise or something else that came up uh, unexpected that, that that would not wait for the quarterly report to come to us. So um, I've got full confidence that, that that wouldn't happen, but I just want to put make have, have assurances that, that we would know about it right away. Sure. I, I mean, and the truth of the matter is that, yeah, yeah if those things are coming through, it's, it, it behooves us to tell you immediately, of course, right? So. Right. Um, and I think good news, knock on wood, there's not a lot of surprises like that that rise to that level. Thank goodness. Yeah. I have no problem with quarterly reporting. Much of America runs on that, and I think as long as subject to Aaron's concern that we're informed of things that are material that come up between reports, I don't have a problem with it. I really appreciate the idea of freeing up Bettina to do some more um, big picture uh, projects, and I think that she'll help to provide um, anything that's relevant on a timely basis as needed, but um, it sounds to me like a good idea. Um, not hearing any... Uh... I have a comment on that, if you don't mind. Sure. The, um, I was looking at the report for uh, our next meeting, actually, and uh, one of the line items on the financial report is a year-to-year -year decrease of 5% uh, for our tax revenue, I think, of $147,000. And so from my standpoint, and having run a business where, you know, the, we, we did not have COVID every year, but we definitely had uh, up and downs on our business. But the having a really fast reporting allowed us to uh, adjust very fast as well. And so I really appreciate what the village does and Bettina and Drew doing where, uh, where you can actually say, well, we're not gonna bridge, build a bridge right now because frankly, we cannot afford it because otherwise it would put us in a, in a dif difficult uh, financial situation. Now, not every year is COVID, okay? But at the end of the day, having, and I do appreciate Bettina's work year to year, I cannot imagine what kind of work it is to actually realize that report. But there is, but now that the, the homework is done every month, you can actually have a fine control over what should be spent next. And I think there is something completely appreciable to that. So in my mind, I think that the month to month is actually very useful, even though we could move it to the quarterly. Um, but that is my, my thought after reading the report today. And I would agree with Regis. I think having, having as much information as possible is always a good thing. Um, I just don't know in, in practicality, would, would we actually use a, a month to month decrease or increase to, to change our capital improvement plan? Uh, for, for right immediately like that. Um, and, you know, I think having Bettina work on higher level things might overall and, and long term bring us more value. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe that begs the question for looking at this from a hybrid standpoint and actually looking at different, different indices and making a decision about whether we have quarterly reporting on some and monthly reporting on others, and and rather than painting it a, a completely brush uh, all the way across, uh, maybe there are some things that we do. I mean, you you've kind of you're, you're you're trying to balance what I guess I would call management reporting and operating reporting here, and clearly at a, you, at a, on a quarterly basis, you you probably pass the straight face test from a management reporting standpoint. The real question becomes, how do we, how do we as operators, and, and we're all collectively, the 13 people, 15 people who are on here are, are rather hands-on. 
whether we're trustees or we are um, in, on, on staff, and we're accustomed to having some level of familiarity and understanding on, um, uh, on a shorter term or, or more uh, tactical matters, as well as more strategic matters or management matters. So, uh, I, Drew, you talked about hybrid model. Maybe that's maybe that would really be something for you and Bettina to kind of noodle over and figure out if there are so, there's a way to satisfy both because there are a lot of, clearly are a lot of things that um, uh, we can't appreciate. The inflection just doesn't show on a month by month basis. The, the trend, the, the the quality of trending just isn't there. On the other hand, there are some items that might have really have meaning to see on a monthly basis so yeah we'll, 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 write, we'll put something together and work it up and um, share it with folks um, you know this goes back to um, when Regis and I talked earlier today he raised that question he asked me you know what you know is what's the key indicator what you know what are you looking at um, yeah and I, I, I said I let me call you I have to think about it <laughs> because yeah. the only other thing I, I would say is you know we stack up against the fin financial reporting standards and are recognized on an annual basis. They're clearly guidelines. And I guess I would want the assurance that that whatever we do, if we went to it out of our current model, we would still align well with um, uh, best practice. And, and, and we would still be able to, at the end of the day, uh, uh, be eligible or make God and Bettina in particular eligible for recognition every year for the fact that we do do uh, uh, financial best practice among municipalities. I, I would not want to lose that. Right. Oh, agree. I, think, agree. I think there's a difference. Um, best practice, I bet you will achieve that because this is one step deferred to what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. On an operational basis, the thing I was, I was advocating for was a fine control to say, we can choose to spend on capital today or we can choose to spend it in six months given what we just got to learn we just learned for this past month of operation in the village so having that very fine control could actually make a difference between okay we need to have a serious conversation no, I understand. and so I that understand. was my point it's important yeah. to be responsive yeah. no and we and we were talking about the various you know what is it one key is it only sales tax no is it you know it's a combination we look at those revenue streams and we talked about, you know, we both went through the recession in 08 in, in different communities, but we went through it. And then here, when we went the downturn with COVID, it was like, you know, we're looking at, we're turning over the whole deck of cards, right? We're looking at everything. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very difficult. Um, we can certainly point to sales tax as a key indicator for sure, but it's not yeah. the only one, right? And so, but it's, to, to reach this point, it'd be great to have, you know, one, you know, hey, that's right. it, that's the key. Right. Um, well, I mean, property taxes are usually what we expect it to be. So sales tax is going to be more dependent on sure. the economy and that's, what's happening. Yeah. And, right, right, right. Okay. Right, right. I, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to add really quickly that if we start looking at the hybrid model, which I think is a, a good idea, that we're just cognizant of Bettina's time because sometimes those things mm -hmm. can kind of get out of control. And the next thing you know, right. um, the hybrid model is actually taking more time. It's more work. <laughs> right. report. So I, I, I guess I would just ask that we kind of keep that yeah. in mind. For, for yep. Good again. point, Joy. Thank you for that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, at this uh, point in time, I think it is, um, unless you have other matters to uh, mention, Drew, I think uh, it's uh, calling for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do you have a second? Yeah. Second. Roll call. Trustee Toll? Aye. Trustee Meyer? Aye. And Chair Ankerman? Aye. Thank you.